people, 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 people. Keep passa sa pa say what they do. Welcome to Crime Time News, where the difference is in the meds. Call it news with a buzz. When he was younger, your granny had a saying, Craven choke puppy dog. That can be said for an incident that occurred in a place called St. Mary the other day. The person that you see on the screen, his name is Dave McKenzie. Mr. Dave McKenzie was almost 52 year old at the time he met his demise in Highgate, St. Mary. Based on the Paw Paw report, Mr. McKenzie was taken out by the Paw Paw while he was trying to hijack some sorts of NCB ATM machine early in the morning. Now, people, the reason why I said Craven, C-H-O-K-E, puppy dog, is that it is said that Mr. McKenzie was one of those persons that was decked out in full black like the Alliance, and they were moving the machine, same sorts of ATM machine that he tried to hit up in a St. Mary. This was in Westmoreland. There was a viral video making its round all over social media with about five or four persons that rolled the machine down the road. It is said that they got $8 million that was just put in the machine earlier in the night before the morning that they stole the machine. I guess after them shear up the $8 million, $2 million each, them decide, say, you know, say, it's sweet me. You know, say, it feel good. You know, say, we need to go try it again. We need to strike while the iron is hot. However, what he did not realize that the Pope also had some hot corn in a some sorts of legal tool just waiting for them. Remember, most of these ATMs, them have all sorts of alarm. Them have silent alarm. And I guess this time they were not so lucky or this one individual was not so lucky. It is said that Mr. McKenzie, unfortunately for his family members and himself, luckily for the rest of Jamaicans, lost his life. His friend was locked up. He is presently in the custody of the poor poor. More than likely, this man will be charged for this incident amongst other incidents. I am sure that this is not their first or second time. However, for Mr. McKenzie, that would be his last paradas. Moral of the story, every day that the bucket goes to the well, one day the bottom are going to fall out. Point blank and period. Now the next thing that is popping in the news... We see that the Children Advocacy Group, they have responded to a viral video that has been making its round on social media. In this video, there is a basic school youth. He is seen throwing some sorts of temper tantrum. It even amped up when he realized that somebody was videotaping him. He pretty much gave the teacher one bird, then him give her a double bird. Pretty much he was telling her to go and jump off, go and F-U-C-K herself. Now since then, a lot of persons in my comment section are wondering, where is the parent? Where is the children advocacy group? However, a young lady, her name is Diane Gordon Harrison. She has responded, take a listen, take a look to exactly what she has to say, and then I'll give my piece. From where I sit, it represents a child who is in need of support, serious and emergency intervention because something has gone very wrong. Um, I'm not sure what it is just by looking at the video, but clearly there is the need for an assessment, perhaps psychiatric, perhaps emotional, uh, perhaps of the social context, you know, within the home to see 
exactly what is going on here. It may be as well um, that there is something in terms of developmental milestones that needs to be addressed. Whatever it is, it's a cry for help. As far as the teacher is concerned, I see a teacher who is really trying her best to, you know, maintain control of her class, maintain control of the situation as it is unfolding, and trying perhaps to understand in the moment how best to treat with it. The resources that we need are far from exhaustive, and it is clear that, you know, teachers now are being called upon to do much more than teach. Now, people, we have to understand that Diane Garden, Harrison, and myself, we look at things different. Not to say that any of our opinions is different than the other or one makes sense more than the other. She is more professional. She is going to be more sympathetic. However, I am not the type of person to throw any sorts of sympathy party. So therefore, she is going to have the best interest of the child in heart. So do I. She said that based on this video that is circulating, this child might be stigmatized. This child is crying out for help. This child needs all sorts of psychosocial analysis. So therefore, you have to check and see if there are some sorts of mental issue. Is there some sorts of problem with the home, meaning that the home is dysfunctional, meaning that children practice or say whatever they see being displayed in the house? She said that in Jamaica and people, this is a fact. It is as if these teachers are given basket to carry water. These teachers are asked to do more than teach and in this case it is unfair for any sorts of parent mother father whoever guardian to bring and drop off a child like this without any sorts of intervention meaning this youth might need some sorts of mental psychological therapy somebody from some sorts of social group needs to interview intervene and check him at CFM Ed writes. She gave the credit that was due to the teacher for kind of calming down the situation because we see sir, this child was getting out of hand. However, the teacher handled it very professionally. There's a little bit of concern that I have as it pertains to the person that was recording and then sending out the video. To social media, people, you have to understand I am a blogger, so therefore, whenever I post any sorts of video or mention it, it is to highlight, so therefore, the right relevant authority can intervene. However, let me know in the comment section, do you think that it is right for a teacher to videotape something like this and then send it out, blast it out on social media? Let me know what you think in the comment section. Now, the next thing that is popping in the news, it is called Me can't believe my eyes. Me can't believe my eyes. And this is based on a statement or an interview that was done by some sorts of counselor, political affiliate for some sorts of garrison. She said that there's a whole bunch of fishy secret being kept in these garrison. Have you ever wondered why sometimes you go to some sorts of dance and you see some people where people claim say them a bad man and them have um, powder upon them face, them pants tight, them shirt look like some sorts of blouse. Have you ever wondered why Jamaica is such a homophobic society? However, you have all sorts of fish a prance up and down in the garrison like some sorts of gazelle on the Serengeti. That is because a whole bunch of these men that they call dons, they are actually fishes themselves. This lady is going to let you know that a lot of these dons, 
dem a boga the little picnic them. A lot of them have them under some sorts of fishy psychological bondage. A lot of these men are the evil stepfather, so-called Dan. They are the father figure for these fishes. So therefore, whenever these people join the gang because of their fishy experience that was done to them by the so-called dance, them feel as if them can't leave because their reputation is stained. Take a listen, take a look to exactly what this lady has to say, and then I'll give my piece. It is something that is getting stink. These criminals, and why I say that, these criminal agents are boogering these boys. And sometimes as a local government representative, and when you're privy to certain information, what they're doing is boogering these boys to show their strength. And the parents cannot talk because they're not bad man. So they use that as a form to quiet persons in neighborhoods. And... These parents are not talking any at all. Some of these parents don't even know what are happening to their kids. They do that in order for them when they get them into these gangs, they cannot leave because they don't want others to know what has happened to them. So they use it to quench them and to fail them to get them to do the things that they want to do as a gang. Now, unless you've been living on the rock, and you thought that these dance in these volatile communities are some sorts of Robin Hood figure. And you don't realize that they are there for their own self-gratification, financial gain. There is no sorts of symbiotic relationship as it pertains to Dan and Garrison. All they do is exploit. Them are R-A-P-E-R, the little pit them, the little girl pit them. Them are take what the people them. The people them are lose them life at a very alarming rate. Because whenever they go outside the community and them pound span them rival, the rivals will never catch them. The rivals always catch persons who are guilty by association. So when we hear somebody that is in tune that lives or governs this community, telling you that, listen, this is exactly what is going on. The little boy them are psychologically trapped in a some sort of fishy bondage. The parents are in fear of their sons losing their life. They don't want their family members to get any sorts of, if them can't catch Quaker, them catch him shot syndrome. So therefore, the little boy them in fear, the family in fear, so therefore they comply and compromise their rear section. People only in Jamaica, I am speaking about Bellevue Central. I am speaking about the devil's playground, point blank and period. Now the next thing that is popping in the news is that we see that Gunmen have a next place hostage. I am speaking about Greenwich Town. And this is based on an incident that occurred maybe about 24 hours ago. Where it is said that some people were at some sort of business establishment bar. When two men walked up, pounced upon them, blocked the door, start blaze up all sorts of corn in the establishment. People try to run, people try to scramble, people put them foot in their hand, try to take for themselves. However, unfortunately, after the smoke clear, four persons were hit up. One man did not make it. Based on what the SSP for the era, Mr. Ricketts, had to say, the other three persons, their injuries are not life threatening. Based on what the poor poor are saying, they don't have any sorts of motive. Don't know if they had any sorts of rivals across the road. Don't know if there's any sorts of inter-gang rival going on. But people, one thing that I can say about Jamaica. Gunmen, evil men. It seems as if they think that life is some sorts of video game. It seems as if sometimes 
They just want to show their cumbulous how bad, how brazen, how wicked, how evil they can be. So therefore, they go on these sprees. It actually seems as if whenever they hear any sorts of music, any sorts of entertainment, any sorts of people enjoying themselves, they always want to spoil the people them joy. And like I've often said, misery loves company. However, sometimes there is something into something. Wherever there is smoke, there is fire. People, based on how Jamaica is running right now, if you live in certain communities, you have to almost tell yourself, say, listen, may I go tanning at the yard. So while we are law-abiding citizens, it seems as if we have to be held hostage by these gunmen. We are prisoners of our own homes. We have to stay behind the burglar bar while the criminals, they are out there doing exactly what they feel. Point blank and period. So anyways, people, thanks once again for checking out my video. If you appreciate videos like this, please show your appreciation by liking, commenting and sharing to my channel. That is how YouTube promotes videos like these to like-minded, sensible persons like yourself. Bless up.